I assume that you already know how to teach nutrition, but you want to know how to teach nutrition online. I've discovered the best approach to do this that will not only help you teach effectively, but will actually work to market for you and automatically pull in people who want to learn nutrition. Personally, I love nutrition. It's an important thing in my life, but it's not my expertise. It's not what I teach. What I teach is how to teach online and how to get results online. I produce dozens of different YouTube channels from real estate investing to parenting to mindset to relationships, lots of different channels. Of all the channels that I've done research on, I found the most opportunity with nutrition. So please pay attention to this video. And also just as a side note, if you currently have a seven figure business teaching nutrition, then you and I really need to talk because with my strategy, I know how to bring in an additional seven and eight figures into your business. Okay though, this episode is about strategy and I'm gonna show my whole strategy to you. We're gonna start out this video talking about the strategy of teaching nutrition online. Then we're gonna jump into how you start your videos and how you keep people's attention. Then I'm gonna teach you an efficient way to prepare your videos, and then we'll wrap up the video talking about a strategy of how your videos are gonna be found. I make hundreds of educational videos every month on YouTube. This is my expertise, and I help lots of other educators do the same. In fact, many of them are doing extremely well financially. Several of them are making six figures every month and we follow this exact strategy. So here's an overview of the strategy. Okay, right now, all around the world, there are people going to Google and YouTube asking some type of nutrition question. What we're gonna do is make how-to videos that answer their questions. So they're going in there, how to do this, or what does a banana this? We make a video that answers their specific question, then they see ours because it's the exact question. We're looking for real specific questions, like typically eight or nine word long questions. When they're that specific, it makes it really, really easy to answer online. So they do the search, they see our video on top, and they click on it. And because it's exactly what they're searching for, they watch it all the way to the end. Now the YouTube algorithm sees that and says, wow, Let's promote this video to more and more people. So as you continue to make these how-to videos, you're finding people that come and find your content and really like it. They really value it. They, they trust you. They're making eye contact with you through the video. And so they're starting to build a relationship with you. They admire you and eventually they get to a point after they've watched a few videos where they feel like, you know what? I think this is the person that I want to hire. Before we film, we want to start with the keyword research and I'm going to show you a tool that makes this step really, really easy. Now in the world of nutrition, there are thousands or tens of thousands of topics. You're never going to run out of things to talk about. I've done searches in nutrition. So let, let me just type in the word nutrition just to show you and then we'll, we'll pick some specific things. And before I hit the search button, let me just tell you about this tool. It's called the keyword magic tool. I used to use a whole list of tools. I would find ideas with one. I'd check search volume on another and realize, oh, that there's not a lot here, so I need to expand it using another tool. It took me all day to do now what I can do in about an hour. So watch what happens when I hit search. We get a, a list of results pretty similar to other keyword tools, but the magic comes when I hit this button right there. It filters out everything that's not a question, and we see we've got 40,000 questions that have the word nutrition and it's still left. I'm gonna turn on one more filter. I'm gonna add a word count of eight words or more. So I'm looking for really long phrases that are questions, of course. All right, so there's a lot of great questions here. Let's see if any of them apply to you. Can you use nutritional yeast to make bread? Okay, so obviously that's got the word nutrition in there. What can you do with a nutrition degree? That might be a topic for you or maybe not. Ooh, check this out. What is the nutritional value of a banana? What's the nutritional value of an avocado? And I'm sure you could kind of just fill in the blank of any food that you can think of. There's gonna be a lot of questions like that in here. And here's another one. What's the nutritional value of an egg? So you notice that I started to just check the ones that I liked. You can come over here at any point and export them. So when I click that, it downloads to my computer and it will open up the spreadsheet. So I only checked three. I prefer to use Google Docs. And so what I would do is just copy these three and paste it into my Google Doc. Now the search that we did here was just on the word nutrition. Maybe one of the things that you teach is how to lose weight. Okay, so let's just type that in there. 
And again, we're looking for long phrases, so we're gonna find specific ways that people are asking this question. Even though I put in a filter that had a minimum of eight words, I'm still finding extremely high search volume. And with this strategy, we're trying to eliminate the competition. These phrases are gonna have much more competition. So if I scroll down, let's see if that number lowers. By these numbers, I can tell that there are just millions of phrases around losing weight. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm actually gonna increase that word count to nine and see if it filters out some of these. Okay, but then we get down at the bottom of this first page, how many miles should I run to lose weight? How much cardio should I do to lose weight? Okay, and we wanna talk about nutrition, right? So I can come back up to the top and put in the word, uh, let's just put in some, I was gonna put in food, but what if I put in something specific like broccoli? And I don't even know how to spell broccoli. Ooh, I must have done it right. Check this out. So I only found one, but it's, it's a good one, and I'll talk about that number in just a minute. Will eating chicken and broccoli make you lose weight? That's a question people are asking, and you can make that be the title of your video. So let's talk about this small number 10. Okay, that is a small number of searches, but think about that. This phrase is nine words long. And so what this 10 represents is there are 10 people that are asking this question, but typing in these exact nine words in that exact order. Okay, so obviously that's gonna be a small number, but there are lots of people asking the same question, just worded in a different way. So here's what happens. You give this video this exact title, and these 10 people, when they search on Google or YouTube for this title, they will find your video, right? It's exactly what they're searching for. They hit play, they're gonna watch it all the way to the end because it's exactly what they need. The YouTube algorithm sees that and says, wow, this is a high performing video. Let's suggest this video to other people who are making similar searches. And so in the beginning, you get the attention of that first 10, and then YouTube will start to promote your video to more and more people. One more comment to make about this strategy that I hope you understand how valuable this is. When you eliminate all the competition, that means that when you put this video on YouTube, you rank instantly, number one, on the top of YouTube. So while it might be tempting to go after phrases that have thousands of searches, you put it to YouTube and you're not gonna get any views. You put a video with this specific of a title on YouTube, and you're gonna start to get quality views of people who are searching just for you. Now hold on just a minute. I just noticed that you haven't subscribed yet. So there's a red button. Go ahead and click that red button and subscribe to this channel, and then right next to it, there's a bell. Click that button as well. That turns on alerts, so that each time I upload a new episode, you'll get an email from YouTube and you won't miss a thing. Once I have the titles selected, the list of videos that I wanna film and I'm ready to prepare the content, I use the same outline every time. This is what the outline looks like. I've got my title. I can make notes about my intro if there's anything I wanna say specifically in the intro. I remind myself to give content hooks. Then I have several bullet points where I can just put the talking points of things that I wanna talk about throughout the video. What I wanna talk about first, second, third, you know, I might end with a story, and then I always have a very specific call to action, whether I'm recommending the video that they should watch next, or the lead magnet, the free gift that they can get by clicking the link below. Now, we already talked about your titles. Remember, this is probably an eight or a nine word phrase. That's what your title is. In your intro, you're basically reading the title to them and then telling them why it's important. So, hey, in this video, we're gonna talk about this long sentence. I've been doing this for years, or this is really gonna change your life. Right? So something profound, something that's a why of why they need to watch this 10 minute episode. We're gonna talk about the content hooks in a minute because we need to have the content prepared first. One way that you can think about it is in time. Like I'm gonna spend a minute here, then I'm gonna spend a minute here, I'm gonna share a story, maybe that's two minutes, I've got another minute here, and I've got another minute here. You'll know the time as you go along. Now, when you prepare it this way, you don't want to memorize it, and on filming day, try and remember all bullet points, because guess what? You can pause. I'm pausing a whole bunch while recording this video, but I know that my editors will just edit out those pauses. And what I have all my clients do is they do point number one. They look at their notes, and then they come and they look into the camera, and they deliver point number one. They might talk for one minute, 90 seconds, maybe two minutes, and then they finish point number one. Then they come back, they look at their notes. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna talk about next. Then they come back to the camera and they deliver point number two. They're not thinking about what point number three is. In fact, we want them to intentionally pause after they're done talking about point number two. 
They come back to their notes, they look at point number three and they say, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna talk about next. They look at the lens of the camera and they deliver point three. This is the best way to prepare your content because one, it's simple. You're not writing out a lengthy script that might take you a couple of hours to prepare for one video. Now you can just bullet point the talking points in maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and that episode is prepared. And you can take the burden off your shoulders of having to memorize all this content because you've just got memory joggers. I'm gonna talk about this first, then I'm gonna talk about this second, and you're gonna pause between each one. When you start each episode, you need to include two things, okay? What the video is about and then why they should care, okay? Why they should watch this episode. So let me just demonstrate it. Doreen Spackman uh, shared with me a remedy for a sore throat and the title of the video was how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics. So let's just pretend that's my title and I'm gonna start out this episode. And hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna talk about how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics. I've used this remedy for years. It really works and you probably have the ingredients in your kitchen. Let's dive right in. Okay, so I said the title and then I backed it up with why. Like I've been doing this for years, it really works. You probably have these ingredients. Let's say the question is this, what are the nutritional benefits of a green apple? Okay, so this is how I might start that episode. Hey, welcome back. In today's episode, it's all about apples. In fact, green apples. We're gonna be talking about what the nutritional benefits are of green apples. And boy, if you've been eating red apples, this is something you really wanna know. Okay, so I just made that up and I don't know if I really wanna compete red against green apples, but hopefully that gives you an example. After you've done your intro and the little opener has played, your little branding piece that's six or eight seconds long, then comes the content. And you wanna start out your content with content hooks. So I wanna demonstrate how not to do it and then a better way to do it. So on the outline here, I'm gonna just demonstrate with this title, how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics. Now Doreen Spackman, she's the expert on this topic. She taught it to me. I've used the remedy many times, so I'm gonna pretend that that's my expertise, okay? And here's my outline. You notice I've got three words or one word or two words, okay? Very simple outline. I've got six different points that I'm gonna cover in the video. First, let me demonstrate how not to do the content hooks. All right, as we dive into this topic of how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics, really you just need three ingredients. If you go grab some garlic, some cayenne pepper, and some raw honey, and you mix that together, you take that, it will wipe out your strep throat. I just gave away the whole episode, right? Why are people gonna need to watch longer? Or maybe they don't believe me. Maybe they think, oh, that sounds too good to be true. Let me go find a better video. Or maybe they do believe me and they go leave to see if they have those ingredients in their kitchen. Who knows, but they're certainly not gonna stick around for the full episode. So here is a second attempt and I'm gonna set some content hooks that create curiosity. All right, as we dive into this topic of how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics, First, we're gonna talk about why not antibiotics. And there's some good reasons why you might wanna consider an alternative. Then there are three ingredients. We're gonna talk about each one and how each one is a natural antibacterial and a natural antiviral. It's amazing stuff. Then we're gonna to go to the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how to prepare this and how to take it, dosage and whatnot. And then I'm gonna wrap up with a story. My son, when he was really young, he had a high fever, he had strep throat, and we use this remedy. He also experienced a side effect that you're gonna to wanna to know about because you're probably gonna experience this side effect as well. All right, let's dive in. Okay, do you see what I did there? Do you see the difference in the first example and the second one? Hopefully you see how the second one really would create a lot of curiosity and didn't give away the secrets. The whole goal is to create curiosity and help them think, wow, this is an amazing video. I'm excited to spend the next 10 or 12 minutes watching this episode. Now let's talk about the end of the video. You wanna have a call to action if you want your channel to be profitable, right? If you wanna make revenue or you wanna have customers or clients, you need to ask them to do something. But it's actually easier than you might think. You don't have to sell them anything at this video, which, which would kind of be weird when it's an educational video, right? You're giving away information for free and then at the end you're trying to sell them something. No, nope, we don't have to worry about that. Give them a free gift. Okay, so you might say something like this. Hey, now that you've learned how to do A, B, and C, I wanna give you a free copy of my book. I go way more in depth on this topic, and if you click the link below and you just cover the shipping costs, I'll send you the book for free. That type of a call to action or that type of a lead magnet, the gift that you give away is called a lead magnet because it attracts leads. That can be really effective because in order for them to pay the shipping costs, 
They need to give you their name, their phone number, their address, their email, and they're paying a few dollars so you know that they're committed. So it's a high quality lead and you get a lot more of their contact information. As a heads up, the lead magnet that I'm going to give away to you for watching this episode is my Influencer Almanac. It's a digital piece that has a lot of valuable information in there, but there's no cost at all. You just get it for free because I don't have to ship it out to you. I can just email you the link. Another thing that I want to talk about about call to action is engagement. You can ask people to do things like, hey, remember to subscribe. Did you notice how I asked you to subscribe earlier in the episode? I was over there sitting on the stairs. Most people wait to the end of the video and their call to action is that. But what that does is it tells people to leave. It says, you know what? I'm all done. You can be all done with YouTube. See you later. See you tomorrow. You actually don't want to give any signals like that. So at the end of your videos, you either have a call to action to a lead magnet where if they are going to leave, they're going to your website or you have a call to action that leads them to the next video that you recommend that they watch. So you might say something like this. Hey, now that you've learned A, B, and C in this video, if you want to learn X, Y, and Z, go watch this video next. You can point to it. You can tell them the title of the video, but that way they're not ending their YouTube session. They're actually continuing and going and watching another video that you recommend to them. I typically will recommend that we do five episodes that link to a lead magnet. So the call to action is to go to a lead magnet. The other 15 would link to those five videos. So it'd be, hey, if you've learned A, B, and C, you need to go watch this video next to learn X, Y, and Z. And then at that video, the call to action is the lead magnet. So now you've got a glimpse of the strategy. You actually see how you can teach nutrition online. I wanna help you further, and so I've got a free gift for you. It's called my Influencer Almanac. Now this is an online resource that I continually add to to make better and better. And what I've put in there is all my tools, all my tips, and all my strategies of how to get these results on YouTube. So if you really want to teach nutrition online, this is the resource that's a must have for you and you just get it by clicking that link below and you can get access to it right now.